so of course, you know, uh, from our last video, this is where we left off, right? We'd applied the modifier, so we had a, a denser mesh. Um, we're eventually going to apply it one more time, right? And our polygon count's still going to be quite low for this, right? Like, right, even right now, it's only 5,000 triangles. So when we're done and we do one more apply for these, our character's base body is going to be, you know, 15,000 triangles. Um, that's going to be fine for the vast majority of pipelines nowadays. That's one of the reasons why you sh don't need to be afraid of a subdivision service modifier anymore, in my opinion. Um, doesn't mean you want to use them willy-nilly, right? You, know, you always want to apply it eventually because you are shaping for it to look good in subdees. Uh, and by applying it, your low res actually looks good. We're just taking the opportunity to have that shortcut, right? Instead of having to put in all of this by hand uh, and stuff like that. Um, and of course, they're already on, right? Mirror and subdivision surface. Um, we extruded some stuff for our foot. Now, of course, if we want to add a little bit more detail to the toes, we can do that, right? Remember, Alt-C for loop cut, right? Remember, I'm in modeling workspace up here. That gives you some of your basic modeling tools right there. Loop cuts right here. But Alt-C is the quickie for that. So I can actually go in here if I want to. And remember, the loop cut always works perpendicular, right? So like I said, if you want a fifth toe, just add an extra edge loop up the body. Right? You'll be able to use it. It'll be useful for the face and the, uh, the chest and all that stuff. Um, we don't need it, but if you need that fifth toe, it's not going to go to waste up on the body and the face as well. Right? Um, so for me, that's how I get the fifth toe. We're just going to keep it a little simpler and keep it four toes. Or at least the space for four toes. Right? We at least have four polygons that we could have extruded. Uh, but remember, loop cut works perpendicular to your edge loop. Right? See, let's see how if I'm on this edge, it goes perpendicular. If I go over this edge, it goes perpendicular that way. So I can easily just kind of add a loop there if I want to. Actually, maybe even two. And you can easily then uh, switch to W for your move tool. And remember, if you just left click and then shift left click, right, while in edge mode, two for edge mode, I could select just those two edges. And remember, you can always grab the handles, right? You can grab the uh, blue or the uh, green, which is a Z and Y. But remember, middle mouse button is actually your view move, right? So middle mouse button. Actually, you do have the handle too, right? The white handles, right? Usually that white circle you see, whether it's in move or rotate, um, or even scale, right? So see how rotate has it, and scale has its own kind of circle. Those are kind of like your uh, uniform or your view. Uh, middle mouse button will automatically do them. So if I hold down middle mouse button, it is move. You see, I can just do a little bit of view move for that. And these extra two edge loops allow me to get this better shape, right? Uh, it also effectively allows me to kind of have more uh, proper knuckle segments, right? If you actually look at your toes, like your fingers, it's kind of generally three bones, right, that can bend. So we've kind of got that initial start for those as well. Uh, remember, you can hit Q. Uh, and cycle through, right, to your tweak tool. Uh, or you can, of course, sign your own quickies to it. Like I said, I have my mouse buttons assigned. I think those are great to do for it. And I just come in here and I can do a little bit of tweaking for the shape to keep it rounded and a bit more dynamic to what I want it to be, right? Maybe bring that back a little bit. So remember, you can always go back in here and do some quick tweaks to just kind of adjust that toe shape a bit better. Probably want that back a little bit. There we go. Remember, it's really just kind of about moving these things from all the different views so that you get difference in size, right? See how these edges are smaller here than this one? That kind of creates that roundness. And then, of course, I can go back to Alt-C for loop cut. And I can just kind of add two here. Remember, if you left-click drag instead of just left-click, you can actually slide the edge loop. Uh, by default, when you left-click, it just puts it right in the middle, uh, which is actually really, really cool. Um, and then, of course, I can hit Q for tweak, and I can just bring this edge down and this one up and then back a little bit. And you see I'm kind of rotating around my views. Now, remember, you notice how it's kind of uh, automatically my camera rotate is working around where I'm at. Remember, that's actually edit preferences, navigation. You can turn orbit around selection on. I actually have uh, grown to love this feature uh, in Blender, right? Um, I have that on, and it actually works for sculpting and painting as well, so it's actually quite cool. But basically, whatever you're working with, whatever was selected, it'll set your camera rotate around that, right? So it's kind of a cool way to automatically focus on the area you're working in. Let me see if I can kind of bring some of these edges in a little bit from the top. Bring them up here for the side a little bit, just to create better shape here for this, right? 
remember, you can always keep shaping to keep the shape kind of more what you want. There we go. And so I'm just kind of make sure it's trying to make sure it's straight, right? And that's oftentimes just kind of move it until it looks about as square as it can in subdivisional uh, surface mode, right? But now you can see we've got those extra edge loops there for us, right? We've got those extra toe edge loops. So I was kind of, uh, I just want to do a little more of that before we start on the hands, just to show you, hey, you can use loop cut to get yourself a few more segments for your knuckles, right, and your toes. And that allows us to get uh, a more accurate shape for it. Uh, believe it or not, your toes actually kind of arch up a little bit and then back down, <laughs> right? There's like kind of a little bit of arch. All right, so now I'm going to go to the hands, because uh, that's what we want to do now, is we want to build the hands. Now, if you look at the kind of stump here for the hand, there are four polygons for four fingers. But they're not really set up like a normal humanoid hand is, right? It's, it would kind of be more like an odd world kind of creation character where you'd get like a crab hand, right? So that's not really going to cut it for me, right? It's not really going to cut it for exactly what I want to do. So what I need to do now is I need to go to face mode, right? Three for faces. Remember, two is edges, one is vertices, three is faces. Now, my tweak tool is still on. Uh, what's cool about the tweak tool is it actually still works well as a selection tool, particularly if you don't need to use like circle select. So even with tweak on, I can left click instead of left click drag, right? Remember, if you left click drag, it moves it automatically. And then, of course, shift usually adds, right? Now, control usually subtracts on Blender, but you'll notice with the tweak tool, you have to use shift again. So I, uh, I believe Tweak is the only exception. I think there might be one more, but generally in Blender, uh, much like Maya and other software, um, Shift will add uh, and, and Control will subtract, although sometimes Shift does add and subtract also. Specifically for the Tweak tool, I found Shift kind of does both, right? So let's select those two polygons on the side here, right? Not these ones here, kind of right on the side of the hand. They should be in between these three stars. Remember, we started talking about stars now, right? Remember, stars are vertices with a certain amount of edges coming out. This is a five star, because this is a vertex with five edges coming out. You're naturally going to have a couple of five stars kind of in your shoulder area because of the deltoid armpit structure. Um, just like you're going to naturally have a little bit of five stars there. Uh, three stars are kind of at the ends of toes and heels. So remember, we want to be careful with our stars, but certain stars are actually pretty natural to a complicated character creature model, right? And they can also be good landmarks, right? So you see that's a vertex with three edges coming out, right? And that's a vertex with three edges coming out. Those are three stars, so I kind of do in between those two. Now all I have to do is extrude, right? Control E is the quickie for extrude. Remember, it's right here, though. Loop cuts right there, extrudes right there. Remember, move, rotate, scale, and your tweak or selection tools right up here. Now, remember, this extrude tool has a yellow handle. But if you hold up your cursor over it, it tells you extrude region together along the average normal. That can sometimes be useful, but you'll notice the outer one, the white circle, that's extrude region together along, um, actually, it's, it's the, um, should be view move, but it, I think it's just kind of saying that. But middle mouse button will do view move also, right? So if you hold down middle mouse button and just drag, it just moves it based on your view. Right, so we extrude that out a little bit. Now, remember, Blender is cool because you could select something, then turn the tool on. But also, the tool stays on, so I could actually go back here and left click, and then shift left click on those, and I didn't have to turn the extrude tool on, uh, off. Right, it's still on. So you see, how I selected the same two polygons on the other side of the hand, right, kind of right above and in between these three stars. And then, of course, middle mouse button. And now at this point, if I want to, middle mouse button drag, right? Because that does the uh, view drag, view extrude. Now at this point, if I want, I can hit back to Q, right? Remember, that'll go back to your selection tool. Uh, but in this case, it's still set to tweak, right? Now if I want to, I could kind of tweak some of this stuff in, right? To get a little bit better shape for the hands area. That's what I love about the tweak tool. It just kind of stays on. You just kind of come in here and adjust it really quick. Uh, remember, you can go to one for vertex to adjust those, or even two for edge. And you notice how the tweak tool stays on, 
right? So you can easily go back in here and just do some cool, fast little tweaks on the different selection types without even turning your tweak tool off, right? The tweak tool stays on no matter what selection type you're in, vertex, edge, or face. Now you'll notice that effectively I actually have four fingers if I wanted to, right? Actually, I have more than enough. I could do eight if I wanted to, but I ha effectively have four. Now, I always extrude the outer ones, right? There's f eight here, right? So I'm going to go to three for face. Uh, remember, Q toggles you through your selection types up here, right? And one of them is a circle, like kind of an orange circle. And remember, you just left-click drag to select those. You'll see that after I do those extrusions, if we use those three stars as kind of guides, there's eight polygons here. I only want to use four of them for the fingers, and it's always the ones kind of on the outside, right? It's always the ones on the outside. I'm going to switch back to tweak, though. Remember, Q toggles you through those. It kind of cycles through. And once again, I'm not going to do, um, you know, all four fingers, but this does support four fingers if you want to have four fingers on your character. In this case, I'm just going to do, uh, I think, two again, because this makes it a little easier for us to work on, and that we focus on the quality of two fingers instead of, you know, um, trying to get four good fingers out. <laughs> so, of course, Control E for extrusion, middle mouse button to view drag. And of course, I could select one on the other side and drag that out as well. So you see how I just extruded two of these polygons. Now, if you want to do a third, you could do it here or here. If you want to do something similar where you have a giant finger, you could do two of them, right? And of course, I can hit W for move. Move that in a little bit. Remember, E for rotate. That was our uh, quiz from yesterday, E for rotate. Remember, this has its own view rotate, right? The white circle on the outside. But that's also middle mouse button. So if I just hold down middle mouse button drag, it rotates based on the view. So this can make it very easy to just kind of, and remember, alt left mouse button rotates camera because we're using industry compatible. Alt middle mouse button moves camera. Alt right mouse button zooms. And I just go in here and I can just kind of, you know, rotate it to get it to kind of the position I want. Of course, I could also do some tweaking, right? If I find that some of this needs to be tweaked a little bit to get better shape, we can. But you also notice I'm kind of trying to make sure these are pretty clean and pretty straight uh, before I add in uh, the knuckles, right? So I kind of try to always do a bit of work to the fingers in this really simple state before I add the extra edge loops to the knuckles. Makes it easier to make sure that they're not slanting too much, right? And I've got a good rotation. So now I need to get the thumb on here, right? Now, the thumb is on the side of your hand, right? But there's also a gap. There's actually a lot of space. Your thumb's actually on the back of your hand. So what I need is I need a loop through here to kind of give us that space. Alt-C for loop cut, right? And you're going to see I'm just going to put the loop right through here, and right in the middle will work. So left click, and that puts that edge loop in there. So now I go back to three for face mode, right? Three for face mode. And you'll see that I now have four faces on the side of this hand to extrude a thumb from, right? So believe it or not, I wasn't extruding the thumb with this. I was extruding what I needed to get the uh, index finger, right? But now with this loop cut through here, I've got four. I want to select the one on the back, right? There's, a, there's kind of two rows here, this row and this row. So we want to select on that back row. But also, if you look at your thumb, it really kind of comes out of the side bottom of the hand. So I don't select the face that lines up with the index finger. I select kind of the one down from it. And then, of course, Control-E for extrusion. So you see that this isn't new tools. It's a couple of extrusions. It's a couple of loop cuts, right? And it's just loop cutting the right area and extruding the right polygons. So Control-E for extrusion. Hold down middle mouse button to drag. And then, of course, I can hit E for rotate middle mouse button to uh, view rotate it. And now we can see that we've got a thumb. Now you'll see that this area and this area is a little kind of chunky, right? So one of the things we could always do is, one, uh, later on in the week, I'm going to actually show you how to optimize this. So I'm going to do a little more shaping to this so it looks better, but we're going to do more to this hand, right? 
I'm going to show you how to get rid of some edge loops. I'm going to show you guys how to use the spin edge tool to kind of change loop flow direction. We're going to optimize this hand to make it better than it is. But this does give us a good start, right? So I'll go to two for edge mode, and I'll just kind of bring some of these edges kind of uh, in, right, just to kind of get that shape better. You can always go to three for face as well, right? So you see how we could thin that hand out simply by just tweaking in some faces here. Or edges, right? Two for edge mode. So we can easily start to get this shape looking a bit better just by tweaking some edges or some faces in. But we are going to optimize this more later on, right? So it's not like we're not going to do more optimization of this hand. This will just give us kind of a good starting point to work from. Uh, I also think I'm going to feel like I'm going to leave the loop cuts to put in for the hand uh, later on as well. Uh, but you can easily do that yourself right now, right? Just a couple of loop cuts. But I feel like that'll probably be a good place to stop uh, for the moment for this, right? All right. But like I said, we're going to come back and we're going to still put some edge loops here. I'm going to show you guys how to delete some edge loops out here and use the spin, ed uh, spin tools to kind of change some loop flow. But this gives us kind of a good start, a good foundation for the hand, even though we're going to do some more to it do some optimizations to get the edge flows a bit cleaner. But it does give us a good rough starting point for the hand. All right. Uh, I think I'll end there. That'll be good.